Hey guys, my name is Ethan and today I'm going to show you some cool ways you can change the configuration and parts in your Strafer chassis. Alright, this is a standard Strafer chassis. It's assembled right off the instructions on the website and thus will be shown exactly like the renders and other images you've been shown of the Strafer. One thing you'll notice about the Strafer is that it uses all standard Gobilda components. That gives you a ton of versatility in how you put the chassis together based on the grid pattern and all the channels and also in the parts you select to assemble your chassis. You can switch out the lengths of view channel for different lengths to modify the size of your robot, which is primarily what we're going to be talking about today. Now the channels that are included in the kit are two different lengths. We have a 17-hole channel for the drive rail and a 10-hole channel for the crossbeam width. This was primarily chosen to get your wheels out as far as possible, giving you the most stability. But the 17-hole channel has another advantage. It will contact another robot, the playing fields, or game elements before your wheels do. This stops you from climbing up those objects and gives you more traction to push on those game elements, robots, or the field a little bit harder. Now this is exactly a disadvantage when you are trying to climb over things because it stops you from climbing over with your wheels spinning. You can approach a lot of those objects at a bit of an angle, getting your wheels to touch before the chassis does and popping you over, but you may want to improve that, which we'll talk about later on. First, what we're going to be talking about is modifying the width. There is a 13.75 inch gap between the barrier and the flying field, and you may want to make your robot smaller than that. By default, it definitely wouldn't fit through the gap, but we've got some cool ways to do that. The first one I especially like because it requires no additional components. It uses the same 10 hole cross beams, but mounts them on top of the drive rails instead of beside them. This uses the same 1201 series pattern mounts that you use on the original strafer assembly, but puts them in a slightly different configuration. I especially like this chassis because it allows you to increment the width of your chassis by eight millimeters, which is really pretty small. You can create a chassis exactly as wide as you want. This one we've made just about 12.2 inches wide or a very similar width to the next chassis we're gonna show you. One thing this does not address is the length of the chassis. It's still gonna be 17 holes long. This next example involves changing out the 1120 series channels for different lengths. You'll notice this uses a four hole crossbeam instead of a 10 hole crossbeam, and it uses a 14 hole long drive rail. It also moves the wheels out to the furthest hole on the U channel, which gives you the ability to climb over things much easier. It removes some of those advantages when pushing objects, but in this year's challenge, I think that's worth it. The other thing about the 14 hole channel is that it's the shortest length you can do with horizontal motors in a strafer chassis. I think this is a really cool example. Like I mentioned before, it's the exact same width as the last chassis you saw. Now, the thing that these three chassis that I've shown you so far have in common is their ground clearance of 24 millimeters. That's the distance between the bottom of the chassis and the ground. This is shorter than the height of those bars on the barrier, which means if you stop moving while you're climbing them, you can get stuck. All of these chassis can get beached, and that's a lot of times a problem in an FTC game. So the next chassis I'm going to show you solves that in a pretty cool way. All right, you may look at this chassis and say, Ethan, that looks a lot different than the last chassis you've shown me, which is true. But the cool thing about it is that this doesn't require very many additional components. First, we'll talk about the large channels. It uses 13 hole long drive rails and four hole long cross beams, just like this guy. But the cool thing about this chassis is you can make it about as wide or as short as you want. You could use 10 hole uh, drive rail lengths and be really short or go to the full 10 hole wide and 17 hole length if that's what your heart desires. The big thing this chassis adds is a one hole channel on each corner. This act as stilts to raise the frame of your robot up by 48 millimeters, giving you much more ground clearance in a lot of areas of the chassis, allowing you to go over the barrier just a little bit easier. Now, the thing that allows us to do that is the motor configuration. These are vertical instead of being horizontal and with GoBuilda being very channel, grid, and pattern based, 
that doesn't require any additional components. We'll show a product insight showing you the order of operations down in the description below, as well as the exact bill of materials on each of these two modified chassis. Another cool part about this is that you end up with four extra quad block pattern mounts. I put these on the top of this chassis for some additional mounting points. I like each of these chassis, but this one is probably my favorite, and I want to hear what your favorite is down in the comments below. If you have any questions for us about these strafers, about Go Build a Parts in general, or about our robot in three days, shoot us an email over to tech at gobilda.com.